My name is Paddy Sleeman, and I'm going to give you a short talk about Ireland's owls. This is a mixture of two talks, one of which was to be given in Cambridge, the British Mammal Society aimed at British mammalogists, and the other for the 60th anniversary of the Cape Clear Bird Observatory was actually given on Cape Clear Island last September. As you can see, I'm giving the talk in a hay barn in North Cork. This is because of the COVID-19 emergency. My normal job is an epidemiologist. I study things like badgers and bovine tuberculosis, rabies, and as you'll see later, I also have an interest in stoves. Uh, when I get stopped at guard at checkpoints and I tell them I'm an epidemiologist, they wave me on rather quickly, which is kind of interesting. Okay, so let's return to owls. Owls swallow their prey whole and regurgitate the remains of their bones and hair in pellets. And by looking at these pellets, we can tell which prey they've eaten. This was called by the late Amy McFadden a very convenient habit because it allows the scientist to study the species of prey that owls eat. <coughs> and in Ireland, this is particularly interesting because there's very few prey here. The um, sorry, this is, the, this is the details of the 60th anniversary talk on Cape Clear as part of the Wildlife Festival, and this, the similar talk was to be given at the Easter meeting of the Mammal Society in UK, but was postponed due to COVID-19. So instead, we're going to put the talk on YouTube. And this is about owl pellets, about how they, they regurgitate the inedible parts, um, what Amy McFadden called a very convenient habit. And this makes it easy to tell for the scientists to tell not only the prey, but also the distribution of the prey. For example, barn owl pellets in Ireland, there are lots of house mice and very uh, lots of field mice and very few house mice. So the first owl we're going to deal with is the barn owl. This is a small owl, also called the white owl. This is a picture from Cyril Herbert Percy's book, uh, While Others Sleep, an illustration of the barn owl. They're obviously nocturnal. They're small. 430 to 620 grams. That's a small owl. They're the best studied, but they also have there's a lot of misconceptions about Irish barn owls. And you can download a booklet from the Dublin Zoo website by John Lusby and Michael O'Cleary, which was put there in 2014. And there is reference to these downloads at the end of the talk. We've just finished, my friend Pat Smithy and I, a review of the diet of the barn owl which was published in Irish Birds in 2019. And there's another review of the diet of the other common owls that was produced this year in 2020. The other owls are the two what we call the eared owls, the short-eared owl and the long-eared owl, also called Leo, not to be confused with our prime minister. The uh, long-eared owl is a resident. It's very ignored, little studied, even bird watchers are unaware that it's present. And the interesting thing about long-eared owls is that unlike barn owls, they have not declined. They've maintained uh, their populations. The short-eared owl is much bigger. It migrates often. And it, um, its major diet of all is voles, particularly short-tailed voles. And it, it occurs in open habitats, for example, and coastal habitats in winter, normally in Ireland. So why study barn owl? owl pellets in Ireland. Well, they can lead to new discoveries of new species. For example, the invasive white-toothed shrew was found in an owl pellet, a barn owl pellet, in 2007 by David Tosh and his colleagues. So it was a new species to Ireland. It also shows, owl, owl pellets also show trends. For example, rats are becoming scarcer in pellets. And this reflects them becoming scarcer in road casualties. And yet this was found not to be the case in our review of the diet of barn owl pellets. Uh, and it's especially interesting in Ireland because of the absence of the open ground vole, the crotus. So we're going to take three specific aspects of owl eco ecology and look at them during the talk. The first is, how do Irish owls survive in the absence of the open ground vole, my crotus? What we call here in Ireland, the prey gap. And do they control, a secondary question from that first aspect is, do they control rats, which is quite an important economic issue because rats are a problem. The second is, are barn owl pellets useful to monitor invasive small mammals? We have a lot of problems with invasive small mammals in Ireland at the moment. 
and it's the question is are our is studying our pellets sufficient to monitor their spread and the third and most interesting perhaps is prey sex why do some barn owls prefer to take female prey this is an important thing that's come to light in that it seems that certain in certain populations of barn owls they, they take predominantly female rather than male prey that's very interesting from an ecological point of view because ecological theory would predict that owls would would focus on male rather than female prey. So Microtus, the open ground vole, is absent from Ireland. In the UK, there are 59 million of these voles, so they're, they're by far the commonest small mammal in, in our in UK, and they make up about 50% of the diet of most British owls. Sometimes more, sometimes less, depending on what stage of the cycle they are. This is from Fiona Matthews et al. 2018. So how do Irish owls manage without this vole? Here you see an illustration of the importance of the short tail vole to barn owls. This is a number of young fledged uh, per pair of barn owls in southern Scotland. And then the x-axis is an index of vole abundance. And you can see that vole abundance and numbers of fledged young are correlated. In other words, the numbers of voles as they go up with the, with higher numbers of voles, the more owls fledge. So they're, they're very significant prey for owls. In Ireland, as you can see from our review here, the, the proportion of the, the major part of the diet is the field mouse, Apodemus sylvaticus. You can see it here in the, the dark green, predominant in the diet until very recently. Uh, you can also see that at the bottom the commoner brown rats, which is the dark blue. And you can see that there's, there's significant numbers of rats, but by nowhere near the majority of the prey. And there are also significant numbers of pygmy shrews. That's in the lighter blue. And as you can see in the, the latter end of the graph in 2014 and 2018, there's an awful lot of yellow. They're the greater white toothed shrews which are now by far the most dominant prey of barn owls in Ireland. And the other point, we'll come back to this, is that the rats that are being taken, the common rats, are smaller. Um, and you can see from this graph that both the white toothed shrew and the barn owl, both invasives, predominate in the, the diet of barn owls from 2014 to 2018. So rats. Some people have said that the principal prey of Irish barn owls are rats. This is, this is simply not true. There's a, also a popular misconception that owls control rat numbers. This is hardly possible because, as we've seen, the barn owl is 280 to 420 grams. The bird weighs that. And an adult rat is 300 to 500 grams. So there's no way that a small bird like that, that could attack and kill an adult rat. So the, barn owl, the brown rats that are taken by barn owls tend to be smaller. They tend to be under 50 grams, too small to breed. So as we've said in the review, barn owls take the interest rather than the capital of the uh, uh, rat population. However, there's probably a very significant role for rats in that our colleagues in, in Rome and Italy, Salviti et al., have shown that when rats are present in the diet, this is very important for breeding barn owls. So they may well have this role here as well in areas that, where there are no bank bows yet or, or um, white toothed shrews. And I'm very fond of rats and I'm interested in them and interested in their control. I used to have a pet black rat, a ratus ratus, used to jump from my shoe to my shoulder and nuzzle my ear. I used to wonder why I didn't have a girlfriend. So it's also been argued that Owl pellets would be useful to monitor small mammals in Ireland. Is this true? Well, our owl pellets, as we've seen, are excellent at detecting bank foes and greater white toothed shrews. But the newly arrived small mammals, such as dormice, uh, are exceptionally rare. The dormice are exceptionally rare in owl pellets, um, as are the bigger um, rodents, such as water voles. And of course, there's no way that uh, a barn owl could take a bigger rodent such as a shrew, uh, such as a grey squirrel, and indeed coypus and muskrats or porcupines. Other invasive uh, mammals would not be detected either. So 
the majority of, in, of expected invasive small mammals would not be detected by bionals, only the smaller ones. So specific monitoring, different monitoring techniques are needed, for example, for dormice to monitor them. And bar, owl pellets are only useful in monitoring bank voles and invasive white-toothed shrews. And finally, we come to prey sex. Now, the small mammals that we're trying to monitor are incredibly important from an ecosystem function point of view. And we think that predation drives cycles in these mammals. And these cycles are very significant, for example, in Scandinavia and in North America, when there are, event, there are uh, falls of acorns, so, so called mass years. This has got huge implications for overall ecosystem health as well as public health. So it's widely we accepted that males are most at risk and will predominate in, in the, as food of birds of prey, whereas it's expected that ground predators such as weasels and stoats will take females because we assume females would be more tied to the nest. And initially, when we discovered that it began these studies, this is what we found. Each year on the island of Cape Clear, we had a small island ecology course, and the students there would, would uh, dis dissect uh, owl pellets, and they would sex the prey. And they found predominantly males. So this is uh, an illustration of the sex of prey as described by their pelvic bones. You have females on the left and males on the right. You can see that the male pelvic bone is much more robust, and the female is particularly has particularly narrow features at the base, and the edge of the pelvic bone is concave as opposed to convex in the male. So that they're easily told apart once you get your eye in a little. So we did a study following on those studies done in Cape Clear, a small town called Lep in West Cork, where a bar a, a a barrel was put out in 1994, and when we found the barrel, we found 12 kilos of pellets in that barrel, rotted down. And from these, we identified 6,084 uh, prey remains. So it's a huge number of prey remains. And when we sexed them, we found that 90% of the prey were female, that we could sex with the pelvic bones. So why were females so common to the prey of these particular owls? Was it we expect females to be more sedentary? Probably for cultural reasons. We now know that, that females seem to move a lot more, as indicated by, for example, studies of human DNA. So perhaps we're misjudging females. Perhaps this is why we expect females to be fewer as our prey. So we assume that more males are killed in the roads because they take greater risks. This is an <coughs> illustration of uh, stoat deaths on Irish roads. The uh, upper parts of the graph are males, the lower parts of the graph are females. And you can see there are a lot more males killed than there are females. And we thought, or we think this is because males put themselves more at risk because they have larger home ranges. But I would put to you that the, it might be the fact that males take more risks and that the risk factor are removed when it comes to owls selecting their prey. Another example is the victims of rabies, which I've studied in great detail, the epizootic at the end of the 19th and early 20th century. The full um, bars here are females and the uh, open bars are males. And you can see that at all ages, right down to under one years old, males predominate as victims of rabies. Again, is this because males are more prone to take risks than females, or is there another explanation? I think that the predominance of female prey in the diet of these barn owls is telling us something very fundamental. I'm not sure what this is. I've discussed it with, for example, Angela Sani, who's a BBC science correspondent as well as a, a feminist and has written a book, recent book about racism, and she has failed to come up with any ideas. So I, I'm very interested in other people, particularly outside Ireland, uh, in the UK and elsewhere, looking at the sex uh, of barn owl prey to see if they come up with the same kind of figures. One of the things about our data on the sex of barn owl prey is that we're not sure that 
the pelvises that we're getting are significant barometers of the sex ratio of the population. So in order, in order to control for this, uh, Denise O'Mara uh, and Emily Kwan in Waterford Institute of Technology are drilling out DNA from the bones that we got from the owl pellets to see if we can sex them using DNA instead of using pelvises. And we wait that the results of those studies with great interest. Okay, I'd like to talk, talk, thank my son, Richard, who's helped me record this, Jeff Oliver and the many students on the Cape Clear courses who produced the pelvic bones, Catherine Kelleher and Ruth Carden, who helped sex the first uh, bones from barn owl pellets, Sean Doyle and the many volunteers who helped us in the LEP barn owl sample, Tom Kelly for use, useful comments, Pat Smitty and John O'Halloran who co-authored the reviews on which this talk is based. And here are the references which we'd be very happy to forward to you if you request them. And here are the links and websites. You can, there's a very good um, website on the Barn Owl Trust where you can look about how to do Barn Owl pellet analysis. There's also that booklet I referred to, this downloadable from the Dublin Zoo website. And finally, there's a, the excellent RSPB uh, Owl Pellet Analysis um, uh, downloadable form, which is very useful if you're training people to, to do this kind of thing. Thank you very much.